Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory <clears throat> to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Hop and the Heavenly Father in the ancient Hebrew. Bahasham meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, all right, the only begotten who the world ignorantly calls um, Jesus Christ. I want to give double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone and peace and blessings to the elect. All right, uh, today we're going to be dealing with um, the problem of evil, okay? Uh, the problem of evil, which, you know, basically it's, um, as you can see over here, it's, it's uh, trying to, you know, uh, say that, you know, the Most High cannot be omnipotent and um, omnibenevolent, all right? Basically, he can be uh, perfectly good. All right, but in Almighty at the same time, because evil, you know, evil contradicts that, so to speak. There, there being evil in the world. All right, so I'm gonna basically um, uh, uh, read this right here because this is something that you know they they try to use as a uh, uh, you know you might have somebody that come that might come up to you and try to present this as well. We have the problem of evil, and there's no solution to that. You know. It's either one or the other, but when you actually have the understanding of the scriptures, you will notice that there actually is a solution to that. Okay, because here it is, you know, going into uh, Esau's philosophy, all right, or pseudo philosophy, okay, where they they instead of you know, because philosophy, you know, philosophia, lover of wisdom, or you know, a philosopher is a lover of wisdom. These people are not dealing necessarily with wisdom. They're just dealing with raising questions and trying to really disprove the Most High. Just like their pseudoscience was really to try and disprove the Most High. All right, and uh, promote that that science. All right. So the problem of evil here uh, says the problem of evil, problem in uh, theology and in philosophy of religion that arises for any uh, any view that affirms the following three propositions. God is almighty, God is perfectly good, and evil exists, right? So the problem, the problem of evil is that God cannot be almighty and uh, perfectly good if there's evil in the world. Because if there's evil in the world, then that's one of two things. Either God is almighty, but he's not perfectly good, therefore he allows evil in the world, or uh, God is perfectly good, but he's not almighty, so he can't stop the evil that's in the world. But, I mean, Isaiah, what's that, 45 and 7? The Lord tells you that he creates it all, good and evil. Uh, 1 Samuel 2 and 6, the Lord, the scriptures say that uh, the Lord kills and makes alive. Proverbs 11 and uh, uh, 1 going into a false balance is an abomination unto the Lord. He can't be. The Lord is not all good. That's a false balance. Okay. You can be perfectly good without being all good. But nonetheless, we're going to go through a, a few uh, uh, scriptures here to, to uh, show you. All right. That there there is, in fact, okay, um, a reason why you have evil in the world and it, ha it doesn't you know, have to do with the most high lacking power to stop it or lacking desire to stop it, okay? Or maybe lacking desire because, you know, it's really judgment, okay? It's really judgment and the solution is reincarnation, okay? Because take a look at um, an example of a newborn baby that's born with, maybe born paralyzed or something, right? So the baby's born paralyzed. Now, that can be considered evil right that the baby had to go through that and people might say well why did god allow it so then they'll come up and say wait either god is evil or he's not all good that's why he let that happen to that innocent baby or god couldn't stop it so he's not all powerful that's that's basically the angle that they try to come with but when you actually go into uh the scriptures as we're going to go through that's really judgment, but you need to understand reincarnation to understand that kind of judgment. All right, so we're going to start off here with the book of James, chapter 2 and uh, 26, going into the, the, the way the spirit and the body works. 
so you have you have a spirit okay you have your soul and you have your body okay and you could think of your soul sort of as like the mind of your spirit right the the, the seat of your your desires you know your your drive what makes you unique right your soul all right which is sort of like in your spirit okay and the spirit being the life force now in order for somebody to be considered alive all right when you're dealing with life and death life you could say is the joining of the spirit and the body and death is the departure of the spirit from the body right so when you die it's when your spirit has left your body it's no they're no longer together it's left your uh, fleshly body therefore you're pronounced dead okay life is when your spirit enters into your body okay you know when 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 that through the act of sex when the body is formed it gets to a point where it's now uh, inhabitable the spirit comes down into that body okay and you have life okay and uh, here's a precept to back it up this is the book of James chapter 2 verse 26 for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also so James is using this example although he's speaking about faith and works he likens it onto a body and the spirit showing you how they work if the body doesn't have a spirit it's dead meaning the spirit is not in it because it is the spirit that makes you alive okay and now from here we're going we're going to go to what happens when you die all right we got to you got to understand first how the spirit in the body works okay and then you can understand that judgment all right for that problem of evil so now we know that when the body doesn't have a spirit is dead right but what happens to the spirit after your your after you die after that separation all right let's go here to the book of uh, ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 so it says here then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and when when is that then when you die okay when you die the dust meaning your body is going to return to the earth as it was okay and how do we know that's talking about your body well what did the lord tell adam here uh genesis 3 and 19 it says in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return onto the ground now if you have if you return somewhere that means you were there to begin with right so what it means by him returning onto the ground it meaning his body is going to break down it's going to decompose back into the earth all right just as there were elements from the earth that were taken to make the body those elements are going to be broken back down into the earth. They're going to return back into the ground. For thou, or it says, for out of it was thou taken. So your body is made up of different elements, all right? And those, those elements were taken out of the earth, okay? And formed into a body for you. So that's what the Lord is telling Adam here, all right? Thou, uh, till thou return onto the ground, till you die. And your body breaks down for out of it was thou taken for dust thou art and unto dust shall thou return so when you go back to ecclesiastes when it says then shall the dust return to the earth that's when you die so this is what happens to your body right your body breaks down into the earth that's why you have decomposers okay and once that happens that's one half that's taken care of now what happens to the spirit it says, and the spirit shall return unto the most high who gave it. Okay. So where is the most high? The most high is in, the, is in heaven. All right. He's in the, what is it? Third, the third heaven. All right. As Paul said, when, when he experienced that out of body experience, all right, he said he was caught up onto the third. All right. Heaven. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. such an one um i believe it's let's see there we go second second corinthians 12 and 1 it says um it is not expedient for me doubtless to glory i will come to visions and revelations of the lord i knew a man in hamashiach about 14 years ago whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether whether out of the body I cannot tell, 
the Most High knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. Okay? It says, And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, the Most High knoweth. And what was happened here was Paul had that out of body experience. Okay, now I got to double check if this was after he was put to death, you know, that, that when he was stoned to death or so. All right, but nonetheless, his spirit was out of his body. That's that he says, I knew a man in Hamashiach. He's talking about himself. All right, and he says he was caught up, all right, to the third heaven, which is where your spirit goes when it's no longer in the flesh, in the body. All right, when it says in Ecclesiastes that it returns to the Most High who gave it, the Most High is in that, that third heaven. That's where Paul went. Okay, and um, verse 4 says, How that he was caught up into paradise. All right, that's that heaven, the spirit world. And heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Okay, so... Uh, uh, Paul was talking about his experience going to the spirit world and notice he, he referred to it as paradise all right um, and um, matter of fact let's get another precept let's see with me see um, here it's uh uh Luke 23 all right and this is dealing with when the Lord was on the cross when he was crucified he was on the cross with two other individuals and now the key is in what the Lord told one of those individuals all right it says here because where was the Lord going after the cross to the spirit world because he was going to die and so his spirit was going to go to the spirit world before he came back before he resurrected right so it says and a superscription also was written over him in letters of greek and latin and hebrew this is the king of the jews all right it says um and one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him saying if thou be hamashiach save thyself and us right you you the messiah right so what you what you doing you know, get off the cross and save us too, right? But the other answered, answering rebuked him. So one of them was saying this, and the other one rebuked that dude, saying, Dost not thou fear the Most High, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed uh, justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. See? So that other individual, the other uh, criminal as it was, well, he must have done something while they crucified him. He's saying, look, we in the same condemnation. We all being crucified. But you and me, we, we, getting, we getting punished for something we did. This man is getting punished for nothing. Verse 42. And he said unto Yahweh Shai, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. So he believed that Yahweh was going to get a kingdom. All right. And what did Yahweh say unto him? And Yahweh said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Okay. And what happened? Well, let's read what happened that day. Where was Yahweh going to be that day that he referred to as paradise and told the other uh, individual that was going to crucify that he was going to be in that same place all right in the spirit world because they were both going to die all right it says and it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour and the sixth hour is right around 12 noon because the, the the first hour you know you start at 6 a.m so the third hour of the day will be about 9 a.m and the sixth hour of the day will be about 12 p.m noon so it, at, at in noon, midday, there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. So there was a three three hours of darkness from from about twelve in the twelve p.m. to about three p.m. All right, that's the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the mist. And when Yahweh uh, 
had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Let's look up the word commend. All right, it says, um, let's just play it. Strong's G3908. Paratithemi. Paratithemi. There you go. And it says here, uh, to place beside or near or to set before. All right. To deposit. Okay. To deposit. So when you, when you deposit, all right, that means you're putting from you into something else. You're depositing. As a matter of fact, let's look the word up. Deposit. Maybe get some synonyms. Uh, of course, it has to be money, right? It says put or set down something or or someone in a specific place typically unceremoniously right so to, to put someone in a specific place okay so the lord here on the cross is telling you know after the three hours of darkness all right he cried out to the lord and said into thy hands that's where i'm putting my spirit I'm, I'm giving up my spirit to you it says and having said thus he gave up the ghost this is an example of ecclesiastes 12 and 7 all right then shall the dust return to the earth as it was when you die and the spirit shall return onto the most high who gave it okay and so what what happened to the lord's spirit it returned to the most high who gave it he gave up the ghost and commended his spirit to the Lord. But the key, uh, the key part in here is, this is where the Lord went after he died, that same day, which he called paradise. And he told that other criminal that that criminal would also be in that same place because that criminal or that individual was gonna be put to death. So both Yahweh Shai and that individual were both gonna be in the spirit world that day because they were gonna be put to death. All right, or they were going to die. The key part is that he referred to it as paradise. Okay. So when we go back to um, Paul, what Paul said here, he refers to, he says he was caught up uh, to the third heaven. Okay. But he calls the third heaven um, paradise. Verse four, how he was caught up into paradise. Showing you that that paradise here. All right, in uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 4, that the Apostle Paul was caught up into was the spirit world, the same place Yahweh Shai went when he died. All right, and the same place he told that individual that he was going to go when he died. Okay, so that paradise is referring to the spirit world. Okay, and that's what happens, or that's where the Most High is. Okay. That's where the Most High is, going back to explaining in uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, and the Spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. That's the Spirit world. That's where the Most High is at. So now, this is what happens. This is how the body and the Spirit work, right? When you die, the Spirit goes to the Spirit world. And Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, that you have a natural body and a spiritual body, a body terrestrial and a body celestial. So, and, and, and even in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, he talks about a, a tabernacle not made with hands. That's that's your body in the heavens. That's where your spirit goes to dwell. But anyway, now that we understand, OK, um, what happens when you when you die, you go to the spirit world. But what happens after you go to the spirit world? All right, let's go here to the book of Ezra, second Ezra chapter 14 verse 35 okay so now we understand how the spirit and the body works the body we know goes to the earth it breaks down right you're buried and your spirit goes to the spirit world and then what happens there it says here for after death after death meaning after your spirit and your body separate okay and your spirit goes to the spirit world shall the judgment come when we shall live again what does the word again mean it doesn't mean for the first time now does it let's look up the word again so to live meaning your spirit is inside a body it's united that's life and 
Ezra says here that we're going to do that again. Our spirit is going to be united into a body again. Okay. Whoa, hold up. The word again meaning another time, once more, in addition to what has already been mentioned. Right? So, after dying, the judgment comes, and then you live again in addition to how you lived before all right you're going to live again meaning your what is what is living your spirit inside a body right but how does that work mother father sex baby and then the baby grows then the baby dies that is how you live right when you when you when your body is formed and your spirit enters that body up until when you die your spirit leaves that body that is life that is your life so Ezra says you're going to experience this again after the judgment. When you die, you go and receive your judgment. Now, when he says after death shall the judgment come, it doesn't mean after death you're going to get, um, you're going to um, play out your judgment, but you're going to receive your judgment after you die. Meaning you're going to be told in the spirit world what your judgment is for the deeds you did when you were alive and we're going to read a, a precept on that because paul expounds on this in second corinthians the fifth chapter so after death shall the judgment come after you die shall that's when you go before the mercy seat the judgment seat actually and you receive the judgment you're told hey this is what you did this is your punishment or this is what's going to happen to you you receive your judgment then you live again why do you live again so that you can serve out your judgment because your judgment isn't served in the spirit world why because let's say your judgment is to suffer being paralyzed or suffer pain die whatever that doesn't happen in the spirit world because just as um job says in job the 14th chapter all right i believe it's the 14th chapter he mentions how when you die, that at where you go, there the wicked cease from troubling, and, and the, the weary are at rest. Everybody rests in the spirit world. There's no pain in the spirit world, meaning you can't serve judgment in the spirit world. Plus, as we're going to read, King Solomon tells you where the place of judgment is. Okay, so let's keep going in here. So, after death, after your body and your spirit separate, as we read in Ecclesiastes, shall the judgment come. You go and you receive your judgment when we shall live again, meaning your spirit is going to come back and enter into another body. Again, that process is going to happen again, meaning it has happened before. It says, and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Okay. And so, you can you can tell in a sense by the judgment that somebody goes through on the earth all right what kind of works they might have done in their past life because if they're going through some severe major judgment you can tell okay you're you you, you know if you're an ungodly individual your works are being declared all right in a sense of what you know your judgment is showing forth what kind of works you did before all right and now let's go dealing with the judgment coming, right? Let's go here to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Okay. So it says here, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach. All right, Yahawashai. Because remember, the Most High gave everything, all right, all power into the hands of Yahawashai. Uh, all right, the Messiah. So everything with the exception of the Most High is now subject under Yahawashai. Okay. Also including judgments. So for those who, who you want to underestimate Yahawashai, you think he's just there. No. All right. He, he that man. All right. So it says here, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach. Right that everyone may receive the things done in his body 
according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. Now, when you appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, where is Yahawashai? All right. All of us having to appear before his, the judgment seat, where is Yahawashai right now? He's in the spirit world, right? So in order to appear before the judgment seat, you'd have to be in the spirit world. Okay, you'd have to die. And that's when you appear before the judgment seat. And when you are in the spirit world after you're dead and you appear before the judgment seat, what happens there? Everyone may receive the things done in his body, meaning your judgment is going to be according to the deeds that you did in your body, according as he have done or according to that he have done. So based on what you did when you were in your body, when you were living on the earth, after you die and you go before the judgment seat of the Lord, your judgment, because it's, it's not called a judgment seat for no reason, your judgment is going to be based on what you did, whether it was good or bad. Okay? And let's actually look at another translation of this. Um, if you look at the CSB translation, it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, so that each may be repaid for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. You see? So this is after you die. So that's why Ezra said, after death shall the judgment come. Because after death is where you go before the judgment seat of the Lord. All right. And you receive your judgment. All right. According, like Paul said, according, your judgment is based on what you did. All right. When you were on the earth, in your body, the things you did. Okay. And then after that, we live again. Why do we live again? Because now we've received, we've been told what our judgment is. Okay. But now comes the process of reincarnation. That's living again. Okay. And we live again so we can serve out the judgment. Because we've been told, okay, this is what's going to happen to you. Now you got to actually go and live out what's going to happen to you. Okay. So... We know the place where you receive your judgment, but now where is the place where you play out your judgment or you, you carry out your judgment or you pay for it? All right, let's go here to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 16. Now, this is what King Solomon said. And moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. Now, you notice he isn't. King Solomon isn't referring to under the sun being the place where you're told your judgment because we already read that that happens in the spirit world at the judgment seat of the Lord. So what he means by the place of judgment, meaning the place where your judgment is carried out. All right. You're told your judgment in the spirit world, but under the sun is the place where you live out your judgment. You pay for it. And notice it says what? that wickedness was there and the place of righteousness that iniquity was there okay and just as ezra said also then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly be declared because on the earth is when these things happen okay on the earth is where um you see as king, king solomon said you see wickedness here on the earth all right so um the place of judgment now we got to figure out okay well solomon says he sees under the sun the place of judgment where you know that's where you serve all your judgment okay now where is the place of judgment or where is under the sun under the sun is the earth all right because going proceeding to genesis the first chapter it tells you that the the sun was placed in the the firmament of the earth so that's why when you look up you see the sun now, you can also read here in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 15, all right, where it says here, same King Solomon, same thing, says, then I commended mirth. Now, pay attention, all right, to the, the words being used here. He says, then I commended mirth, all right, which is like joy, laughter, right, because a man 
hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry, meaning be happy, for that shall for that shall abide with him what these things the eating and the drinking and the merry these things are gonna abide with him they're gonna they're gonna always be with you all right for his late for his labor all right salakia for that shall abide with him of his labor the days of his life which the most high giveth him under the sun so under the sun is where you are given life right it's where you live your life under the sun is where you eat is where people drink is where they make merry all right and and that's where they labor okay so now when you live where do you live on the earth when you eat where do you eat on the earth when you drink where do you drink on the earth okay so as king solomon is saying under the sun is just another way of saying on the earth because that's where where are you born you're born on the earth right when you when you when you live that's your spirit coming down onto the earth inside a new body because your body is made on the earth because your body's from the earth the food you eat comes from where the earth the things you drink comes from where the earth okay where do you labor you labor on the earth that's the place under the sun okay so we know that he's talking about the earth because that's where these things take place. That's where your life is. You, you live your life on the earth, right? So under the sun is referring on to the earth. Okay, meaning that going back to Ecclesiastes 3 and 16, the earth is where the place of judgment was. Okay, so putting that all back together, after you die, you go and you receive your judgment all right, in the spirit world, and then you live again to serve out your judgment. And as pursuant to Ecclesiastes 3 and 16, that's on the earth. Okay, so that's reincarnation. Okay, now we know how the spirit and the body works. We know what happens after you die. Okay, now let's deal with judgment itself. Because judgment, often cases, comes in the sense of destruction, right? Calamities. You know, you, you get judged for doing doing your actions right good or bad okay so now let's go here to the book of john chapter 9 and we're going to read the first three verses and this is going to be dealing with the problem of evil taking it back all right to the problem of evil okay to see okay why all right do certain evil things happen to people now that we understand how the life cycle works now let's see where the judgment plays in so John chapter 9 verse 1 and Yahweh Shai passed or and as Yahweh Shai passed by he saw a man that was blind from his birth okay and this is key right here okay so before we keep reading when evil was on the earth when evil things happen to people it's judgment okay from the heavenly father Bahashem Yahweh Shai meaning in the name of his son Yahweh Shai all right, most of the time is from actions they've done in their past life. So certain people might go through some things, some evils their whole life, and it's judgment, it's the payment, is what they were told they would go through when they went to the spirit world. Only thing is, you don't remember your past lives. As the scriptures say, all right, there is no remembrance. All right, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things. Okay, so what is an example of a former thing? Your past life. That's a former thing that happened in the past. It's former. So you don't remember your past life. Okay, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. What that simply means is, Right now, I can't remember um, my past life, right? But let's say I have a son, all right, which is the things to come, right? The future, okay? In the future, right, I have a son. 
his son, all right, or when he comes back in the reincarnation, he ain't going to remember his past life either. Okay, so neither shall the things, neither shall there be any, the same way now we can't remember our past, those in the future and those that come after them are not going to be able to remember their past. Okay, just put it like that. Okay, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that come after. Okay, so those that come after the things that are to come are not going to remember those things because they came after it. And those things are going to be former to them. All right. So now that's why when they go, when people go through judgment now, they think, why is this happening? It's because you don't remember what you did to deserve it. But it doesn't mean God is just evil or he's too weak to stop it. But he's actually righteous because he's, ju he's judging you for what you did. He's, 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 you know, he's being a righteous judge. Now let's finish it off here real quick. So it says, um, Verse two, and his disciples asked him. So they saw a blind man who was blind from his birth. He was born blind. All right. And his disciples asked him saying, master, who did sin? So they automatically understood that being blind was a judgment. And that judgment comes from sinning or, you know, going off, doing something bad. So they're asking the Lord, well, who sinned? You know, because that this judgment being blind had to come from somebody doing something bad. So who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind, meaning they knew that in order for you to be born blind, you had to have done something. Somebody had to have done something for you to deserve that judgment. So they asked the Lord who sinned. Was it this man who sinned or was it his parents who sinned? that made him be born with that judgment. Now, you got to ask yourself, why would they ask the Lord if the man himself had sinned? Okay? If there's no such thing as reincarnation and this man had no past lives and he was just born fresh in this life, at what point could he have sinned? Because sinning comes before the judgment. Remember? Like Paul said here, right? That you go before the seat to receive the things you you did in your body. Okay? You receive the things you did in your body. So like here. All right. So you go to receive um, the things you did in your body, all right, meaning that your judgment is based on what you did. Now, if this man's judgment came when he was born, that means he, at what point was he going to sin before he was born, right? If there's no reincarnation, at what point did this man sin before his judgment if his judgment was when he was born? He had to have done something prior to being born to receive that judgment at birth right that's why they asked him that they asked the lord well who sinned was it this man and then why would they ask that okay because they understood that that baby when he was born that when that baby was born blind that baby just looks like a baby okay but the reason it looks like a baby is because remember living again you have to go through the whole process again of being born but within that baby, it's a spirit. There's a spirit in that baby that has been on the earth before. All right. And the, that spirit died in the past life, went to the to the Most High, went to Yahweh Shai, received their judgment and came back on the earth as, you know, a newborn baby, because that's the cycle. OK. And then, you know, when they came on the earth, whatever judgment they were given, you can see it. See? So remember, going back to Second Ezra, it says here, then, right, shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. So here's an example. Now, although this instant was not a, uh, this was a, um, a, a special case, all right, where neither the man nor his parents sinned, the Most High just did that on purpose, all right, to, to magnify his power. But dealing with the, 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 the logic of it, Okay. 
the works of the ungodly were declared. Now, they, the disciples knew the works that this man or his parents had done based on the judgment he was given. See? So why did they automatically assume that he sinned? It was based on the judgment he received. See? Why didn't they say, well, master, who, who did please the Lord or who did righteousness that this man was born blind? No, they said, who did sin? Because to be born blind is a judgment that's attributed to doing something negative or wicked in your past life. Okay? Being born blind isn't a reward. It's a punishment. And when you get punished, you get punished for doing something bad. So if somebody's being punished, their works or what they did is being declared through their punishment. Because you can say, oh, well, if he's being punished, he must have done something bad. So I can tell that he, his works, what he did was he must have done something real bad to receive that kind of punishment. And based on the kind of punishment, you can sort of gauge, well, how bad, you know, exactly were you, <laughs> you know? Um, and verse three says, Yahweh Shai answered, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of the Most High should be made manifest in him. Okay, so now in verse three, what the Lord was simply saying was in this particular case, it was neither. This was a special case, all right, that the Most High set up, okay, to make the, you know, to make manifest his works so I could heal him and, you know, make manifest the, the, the works, okay? But it's, it's you know, uh, uh, it's not a, it, this is how it usually happens. You, you know, you go off, you sin, and then you come back and pay for it. That's why instantly the first thing the disciples thought to ask him was that question. And there's your answer to the problem of evil. When, when evils happen to people, it's because they're being judged, all right, for something they did in their past life. Doesn't mean the Most High is evil or he's not all good because, well, he's really, really, he isn't. The scriptures say it's, he's a perfect balance of both. All right. But it doesn't, it's not about how good or bad the Most High is or how strong the Most High is. It's about judgment. If you do something bad, you pay for it. Okay. So when they try to say, well, e when evil was in the earth, it's either because God can't stop it or God doesn't want to stop it. No, it's because this is how judgment works. Reincarnation. All right. It's not an either or thing because they try to trap you in those two options only. Like these are the only two options, either this or that. And that's it. If it's none of these, then you can't No. All right. So that's pretty much it. All right. I'm going to stop it off here. Just want to go through that. Uh, Lord willing, that was edifying. All right, to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak Wadash. Until next time, Shalom.